Hi guys, how's it? In the name of Christ, it's your girl, Garabo, Crank K. I'm rocking up now with a little bit of a more somber tone, whereas earlier I told you that whole rapture dream that I had with some guy that's abusing me right now, getting left behind and just taking it in his stride that he's going to hell. Well, I'm a little bit more sober now uh, because of what's going on on, in, on my channels on YouTube and it's really very heartbreaking, even though I would like to believe that I'm cool, that I'll be alright. No, I'm not okay because who under heaven burns the midnight oil and grinds like a dog working basically mercilessly only to receive no reward or to have what they do go nowhere whether or not this is an issue about my ego is irrelevant uh or vanity on some nobody's looking at me at the end of the day when a person speaks on a podium they hope to have an audience looking at them whether or not what they're speaking is of any value if nobody's coming to listen to you then all the research you have done in order to deliver this message is worthless and so too is the speech that you're delivering uh, basically barren, empty, hollow, naught, and ash. I am a Christian, I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the work that I'm doing is therefore to reach souls for the kingdom of heaven. And um, whether or not people come to listen to me uh, actually does make a difference in my day because heaven rejoices to see even one sinner repent. Therefore, when sinners do not repent or when sinners do not listen to the gospel, heaven must surely be sad. I mean, the opposite must be implied. It must necessarily be true. So it hurts when no one comes not for the pure only humble reason that no soul is getting saved but also because the work of our hands that we work heartily with by the sweat of our brow do we engage in hard work when it receives no reward on that day it is slavery on that day it's just this arduous amount of work that's going nowhere and i don't know of any slave at all that's ever been content purely because they're a slave in christ I also do not know of any slave at all that has never wanted to actually escape or be free. I do not know of any slavery movement that has not been frowned upon by some people in that society sufficiently enough to spark some kind of a revolution against the slavery so the slaves could be set free. Many of the oppressive regimes of our time and even of times past were overcome because there were a few people on the side um, of society gazing upon the matter, creasing their foreheads in angst and um, wondering why do people do this to others. The world cannot be so bereft of moral virtue that they would not be disquieted by a situation that is an obvious travesty gawking at them. I am a child of the living God, I'm a Christian, and I've been persecuted for eight years straight. And I am pleading for my life that somebody or a group of somebody's might notice that a woman is being murdered. Right now, as I speak to you guys, my mother has just come back from work and she's on her phone. The sound of her being on the phone has become a trigger for PTSD in me because it is the way that I have been ignored by not only her, but many of my family members just walking around my impact pending obvious murder by suicide for years. They have carried on merrily on their phones, walked up and down in front of me like I'm not a human being and pretended like my heart, whether or not it aches, is irrelevant to ache because I did this to myself. Like you know the way that you would treat a person with tough love that is a junkie, a drug addict, just won't stop doing drugs and no matter how many therapy interventions you endure them through, they just always bounce back, they relapse. They get frustrating at some point such that eventually when their future has been devastated and they've got nothing to look forward to, you can successfully look at them on some but you brought this upon yourself my relatives and former friends anyone at all in my life that looks at my situation gazes upon me with that kind of disdain they literally pretend within themselves that i did this to myself and so whether or not i am devastated 24 hours a day melancholic in great despair is irrelevant because carabo you did this to yourself so every time i hear them walking up and down around me on their phones visiting my mom getting in their vehicles every time i hear a car impending the parking lot here I have trauma in me, some trigger that causes a lot of anxiety to a point of causing me to be like a hermit wanting to hide back here because I don't know who it is and what spirit of patronizing are they going to come with today. These are my living conditions and I need to get out. I need to have freedom of movement and I also need to have freedom of expression sufficiently enough to not be scared. What I say on social media lest somebody should get the information to my mom and so therefore I then find myself getting threatened with homelessness. I need
need to also have a larger environment, basically a home. I am currently living in a shack at the back of my mother's house and I don't have much leg room. I cannot uh, move myself in any way possible so as to feel comfortable. I live, I've been made, the, I, I have a, um, a rescue animal, a cat, and I wish I had not encountered that kitten at the time that I encountered it and felt sufficient enough compassion for it to rescue it with my mother accepting that I would take it. Basically uh, being happy to agree to buy it food. I wish that day never came because now that cat has become the bane of my existence. Because I literally after the act have realized just how small this environment is for me to be having an animal that essentially every so often loves to mud bathe, dust bathe, get in the sand and then come and muddy my sheets. I cannot keep this place sufficiently clean enough and the cat just exacerbates that issue especially when it has been raining. I cannot make it an indoor cat for obvious reasons because then it would be animal abuse to keep a cat enclosed in this tiny environment so it roams around freely it climbs trees it gets in the sand but it has only one place to sleep in here so i live with a dirty animal and my bed linen is constantly getting muddied by it and i am not selfish and mean cold enough to just throw the cat away or send it to the spca where i know they're definitely going to put it down because nobody's about to go and adopt a two three year old cat when there are more than enough kittens to go around so i would not give it up i essentially have too much of a heart for the cat to let go of it but i'm in no position to take care of it yet i've got a whole bunch of witches insisting that i need to go and find some man to take care of me put a baby in my stomach and i will then take care of it when all i've known is abandonment for years all i have known is abandonment and so therefore i cannot trust anybody to take care of me meaning that if i have a child i am going to be a lot more desirous of letting it go or neglecting or abandoning and abandoning it or treating it like it's not a human being or acting in its presence in a very agitated fashion every time it knocks on my door or wants something from me this baby precisely because i am in no position to take care of a child with any liberty with any level of ease with any leg room and yet these are my living conditions nobody has compassion or mercy on me and there is a disturbing trend that i am picking up since i am in this position i am of course doing everything in my power to try and get out of here i have embarked on endeavors that i have prayed about taking them to the king of the universe laying them prostrate before his feet to seek his face to extract me out of this environment and i do believe in the sovereignty of god and that he will ultimately do what needs to be done for me but i need to come here and talk about my struggles and my pain and my sorrow and communicating to you the exorbitant frustration that as a persecuted Christian I am enduring at the hands of essentially a police state but just in my own ecosystem alone where I am being surveilled by family members. I have got a celebrity example to basically give to you that you might understand just how bad my life is and what exactly is going on and how I have not had this coming. Let's do that in part two.